Okay, I just wanted to go ahead and get started with the, today's webinar. I'm going to be talking about the new features with Metastock 17. Uh, for those that may have already upgraded or looking to upgrade, or maybe you're a new customer to Metastock and looking to learn, get a little bit of training and insight on using the software, I'll try and go as slow as I can so everybody can follow along. Uh, first, let's go ahead. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is David Derricott. I've been with Metastock for 15 years. So I started with version 9. Now we're all the way up to 17. It's pretty impressive how far we've come up to this point. So with that being said, go ahead and just get started. I'm just going to read the um, first part of this disclaimer, and uh, then we'll get started. The demonstration today is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins, and is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using these specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherited in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Basically, saying that you trade at your own risk. So just giving you a little bit of a background for those that know us and may not know us, I always like to go through our history. So we were actually founded in 1982, a person by the name of Steve Akalis. You may have read a few of his books. Um, one is Technical Analysis from A to Z, Volume 1 and 2, or it's probably the most popular ones. And the nice thing with those books, if you don't have them, I'd highly recommend. There's a bunch of PDF e-copies out there on our website as well. But everything that's talked about in that, if you're like trying to learn different indicators and new things inside of Metastock, those books actually talk and about every indicator that's listed in Metasoc because basically that's how he, what we used to do is actually give that to our new customers as kind of a learning tool to technical analysis. So it's a great little book if you've never read it. Uh, we, and then we were actually purchased by Reuters in 1995. They wanted a good charting program to offer to their institutional customers and they approached us uh, back in that, and back in 95 and basically we merged or they, we sold the company to, they bought us from ourselves, basically. And then in, <clears throat> excuse me, then in 2005, we actually came out with our own real-time data feed. Uh, we refer to it as Quote Center. And then in 2012, we actually um, upgraded that feed to what we call Zenith. For those that are, are real-time users, know that that's the, the Thomson Reuters interface, plus also um, it's its own data feed for Metastock. But we, I mean, over the course of that much time, this number is a little off. I mean, we've sold hundreds of thousands of copies of Metastock, but have Lots of, lots of users all over the world in 97 different countries. So, um, And then in 2013, we actually bought ourselves back. So now we're our own company again, uh, which is why we're able to come up with upgrades, do a lot of fixes with the Metastock program, and really enhance it to what our users want versus what, um, what sometimes companies think their users want. So it's really nice that way. Plus, we also have a, um, a lot of really good feedback from our customers for the different enhancements that we've added into the software. So with that being said, let's go ahead and just run through the different things that I'm going to talk to you about today. So we're going to go through all of the new features inside of Metastock, and then I'll talk to you about different promotions that we have at the end. Um, so first off is our Quote Center um, application inside of Metastock. Um, and I'll just kind of like, I'm just going to run through the list real quick, and then I'm going to get into Metastock. So then we also, so it's two new power tools. We added a Quote Center um, application, which is basically a different way of looking at different like watch lists, quote screens. Um, and things like that inside of Metastock. <clears throat> kind of like what you see in your broker, or if anybody uses uh, the Zenith software only, you'll see it in there as well. And then we added the ability to analyze options inside of Metastock. So you can chart these. You can actually open up the program that shows you like all the Greeks. You can see like when an option is in or out of the money, the implied volatility, and those kinds of things. And then um, we also updated the ability to import and read legacy file format in the downloader 17 and you also have automatic symbol updates whereas before you actually had to go directly to the website and then run a file and then that way you'd be able to update your symbol database so now they just automatically stay up to date for you um, for our real-time users guys you ha can actually look at pre and post market data that was actually a, a big request from a lot of our users but then we added like 14 different enhanced user abilities basically these were requests from all of our users turn asking us to add these different types of enhancements to make the software a little more user friendly. Um, and then we added two new different trading systems, one based on Elliott Waves, another one based on the all famous uh, by Martin Pring, that's called the Special K system. So with that, let's kind of move on. Here are the different features inside Colt Center. I'm going to come back to this slide in just a second, but I want to 
and show everybody how you use it. So inside of Edistock, if you come up here on the top left, click on this P to open up your Power Console, and then as you notice, instead of just having the Chart Explorer System Test and Forecaster, now you see you have Quote Center and also Option Scope. So if you come over here to Quote Center, you can either just type in symbols up here and open it inside of Quote Center, or you can go into uh, your own list and actually load them into the Quote Center. So last time I actually saved my own custom data list, and just called it right here Dave's List, and these are ones that I created. So it, you can use your own list that you've created, or you can come down here and look at an exchange if you want to open up an entire exchange, like the S&P 500. Um, one note on that, it does have a limitation of 600 symbols at a time, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so let's go down and open up the one that we call Dave's List. And over here on the right side, you see it'll give you a preview of all of the symbols that are, it's going to open. Well, let's say you don't want to open on these this last half. All you do is just click on the, the last few that you don't want to open. So you can just highlight those and then you just click remove some remove selected instruments. And then it'll only open the ones that are in here now. So I'm going to click on open quote center. And now you can see that up here at the top, what's really nice with this, um, it loads everything. Basically, if you're on real time, it'll load tick and bid and ask. If you're an end of day user, it'll only load the last high, low, close, open, <clears throat> excuse me, volume, net change, percent change. But anyway, a lot of uh, my customers that have upgraded into to Metasock 17, they really like this feature because you can sort on these different columns. So if you want to sort by one that has the highest volume or the the, or in the open or the low or the high or last, whatever you want to load on. Maybe you want to sort on the one that has the highest net change, you know, whatever. But then over here, what's really nice with this, now you've got this little quote screen. Well, you know, what really can you do on top of this? Well, let's say I had two monitors and I could have this on one side and then Metastock on the other. This is a floating window, so I can move it anywhere I want to. So let's say I want to open up any of the symbols. I don't have to go back to my list inside of the Power Console and open it that way. I can just come over here and double click on any of the symbols. Let's just open up Amazon. And that will open up with my pre-saved default template. If I had different indicators or different experts applied, then those would appear on the chart as well. I've just got kind of a little default with volume on here right now. But then you can go through and just literally open up as many as you want. Um, you can highlight a specific group if you want to just open up those and then you just enter and it'll open those up as well. So kind of whatever you want to do. But um, at any, also, if you kind of come down this list and maybe you want to delete stuff off, like, oh, I don't want these on here anymore, so I'll just hit delete, delete those off. But then you say, okay, well, this is a really good list that I, that I like to work with. Now I can come over here and actually save it inside um, the, quotes, <clears throat> the Quote Center app inside the Power Console. It'll just create a new list on there. So we'll just call it webinar. I was going to say webinar, and then just click on save, and now that list is saved. And I can, and when I'm inside of the quote center, I can actually pull up that list through here, or I can just open it up directly, directly through the Power Console as well. So those are different things inside of Quote Center. Um, a lot of customers are really enjoying this part, and even if you're just kind of a standard simple charts guy, it's really nice because you can look at everything right here on one screen. Instead of you having to open up each chart individually and then coming over here and, and hovering your mouse over the actual last candlestick or bar, and then you can see the open, high, low, close, and volume, what it was. Whereas if you just use the quote center part of 17, you can just see it right here in one screen. Um, easy to manage your list, much, much easier way of opening up charts and things like that as well. I actually use this a lot more now than I do the custom list manager inside of Metastock. So that's something that um, customers were requesting for quite some time, so we were able to get it into Metastock 17. So that's the first thing that I wanted to touch on. I want to make sure I hit all the points here really quick. Oh, the one thing is, is if you're not using uh, Reuters Data Link or Zenith for your data feed, you can actually also use your own local supplier, but if you do download your data to your hard drive, you can also take it directly from the local data folders as well. Um, I already talked about you can open up charts directly, you can open up any list. Actually, um, they may have, I think they actually increased it to 1250 instead of 600. So anyway, um, you can select any group like I just showed you. You can create and manage a list, sort and rank by the columns. Um, you do have different colors that are available as well if you want to change it to different colors. Um, I'm trying to remember which ones they are. It's uh, dark, and then you have orange, and then a light themed. 
I actually like the dark the most. So, but you can you have those different options as well. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Um, these are just this is just a screenshot of it. So then, for those of you that are options traders, um, this part is really nice. Uh, we had one question really quick. Hang on. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So then, um, another thing that you can do inside of um, Metastock. Now, if you're an options trader and you like to look at like the Greeks. Um, and you want to look at like the implied volatility. This was always a big request with our end of day users. Um, so brand new tool, like I showed you before, it's inside of the Power Console. Again, you just come over here, click on the P, and then you select Option Scope. Um, and then I just want to kind of run through this real quick, and then I'll go into it more um, <clears throat> more deeply inside the actual program itself. So like I said, you can view any of the option chains as long as they're an optionable stock. Um, even if it's like an optionable future, um, you can actually look at that inside of Metastock real time. If you're using just the end of day and you're an end of day futures trader, it doesn't have the ability to analyze options for um, futures. But you can do it for equities, of course. Um, and then you actually have like the different puts, the calls, the expiration, bid ask, implied volatility, as I just mentioned. You can look at the Greeks. Um, you can sort by expiration dates. So really nice kind of filtering area in here. So like I said, open up the Power Console, go to Options Scope, and let's just type in a symbol. Let's just do, eh, let's do Best Buy. And then over here, you can start by filtering right here, or once you open it, you can filter through it as well. So I'm just going to leave this as it is right now, um, except for we're going to take the expiration down to 90. And then we'll do Open Options Scope. So kind of like with Quote Center, it's its own floating window. Um, and here's where all the calls are, the symbol. Um, you can sort on like the bid, the ask. Um, if you want to sort on the Greeks, maybe you want to look at like the, the delta and you want to sort based on deltas or you want to sort based on open interest or implied volatility or volume. A lot of the times what I like to do, I'm just starting to get into options myself. What I like to do is look at the ones that have the higher volume because I know those are the ones that have the more um, more activity with it. So, um, and then I just kind of take it from there. But it's really nice because you can sort based on this. Um, and then you see over here, you've got your expiration dates. If I scroll over to the right a little bit, you'll see your puts symbols over here. And then you've got your rho, theta, vega, gamma, deltas. So really neat, uh, new little tool inside of Metastock. For our end of day users, um, if you do want to get options data, there is an extra small fee for the options data. Obviously, it took a little bit for, well, actually quite a bit of work for us to get this program in there and also the options data as well. But then over here on the right side, you can see that you can filter down a little bit farther than what I had on the first screen. So if I want to do expiration date based on like the 28th of February, or March 13th or 27th, I can do that as well. If I want to filter a little more on the strike price, you can do like 5% near the money and then it just automatically will filter that way for you. Um, and then you can do in and out of the money. You can do it based on expiration types. Let's do weekly. So you can filter this down to make the list a little bit easier to manage. Now here's the nice thing with this. Let's say you've got an option that you, whoops, didn't mean that. Um, an option that you want to look at. You can actually, I'm just going to sort this real quick on the calls. Just give me one minute. As it's loading, I'll just explain it. What's really nice, okay, good. What's really nice is you can actually come over here and let's say you want to create a list with these options. So you can go ahead and just clip those to the clipboard and then go back over to Metastock. And this part's actually really cool. Um, so we'll open up Metastock and we're going to do a custom um, data list. Oops, go on chart. And then we'll double click here. I'll just call it options date. And then we'll just do right click paste and it pastes all the options in there and then I'll just save this. So now I can either just go in and open it up in Quote Center or if I just want to open it up inside of Metastock, this is something new that you can uh, look at inside of Metastock because you could never chart options inside of Metastock. You could with the real time but it was a little, um, you had to go th jump through a couple different hoops so it was a little harder to do it but now you have it right here inside of the software. So just open it up the first symbol and you can see 
sometimes you're not going to have enough um, data or it's already expired, and that could be the reason why I'm getting a message like that. So let me just see if I can get one that'll open. And I might have one that's not. Um, let's go back to option scope. Oh, I don't have any volume with that one, so that would be the reason why. Let's open up this one inside of Metastock. OK, so this is a better example. Um, so then let's change this to a line view. So that way you can actually open up the options and analyze them. If you want to use a candlestick chart or a line view or whatever you want to do, um, obviously you're looking for ones that have high volume in there that have a lot of trading going on and activity. So, but yeah, I mean, it, it's actually something that's really nice inside of Metastock. You can create your own option list if you want to. For those that haven't upgraded to um, Metastock 17, if you do want to try out the options data, we have some really good offers there as well. But it's just, and this is only for end of day. Um, for the real-time guys, they don't have to pay anything extra because they just already have options available inside of there as long as they're paying for that live exchange fee. You can look at them. Um, for end-of-day users, it's just an extra $14.95, and we do have a few different offers if you want to try it out um, inside of Metasock 17. So if you have 17 and want to try out the options data, let me know, and I can definitely get you on some good promotions there. So that's another thing that is brand new to Metasock 17. A lot of people are really enjoying the option part of um, Metastock 17, um, and people just really, really like it as well. So let's hop back over to my PowerPoint here real quick. So we've already gone through that. Here's just a couple different screens. Um, so the one thing that a lot of we have within Metastock, for those that don't know, there we have an actual suggestion box uh, for those that want to give us like different recommendations, better usability, things inside of Metastock, things that make your life easier while using the program. So what we did is in the past you had these, let me actually hop over and I'll show you. In the past inside of Metastock, um, you had inside the expert advisor, right here, let's close that. You had these different systems that were actually started with Equus, like Equus MACD, Equus Bollinger Bands, and everyone was like, why are they sorted like that? And it just kind of confused, especially our new users, our old users that have been using Metasoc for five plus years, 10 plus years, it was, they kind of were used to it, but so what we did is we renamed them so it'll just say the name of the actual system itself and then it'll say by Metasoc. So in a good example of this would be right here, MACD by Metastock. So it's just easier to read. It's all alphabetized instead of Equus MACD, Equus MACD trading system or Equus Bollinger Band. So a lot easier to do now. So you've got the, instead of Equus momentum indicators, you just have momentum indicators. So a lot easier to read and manage a lot of people wanted that option um, and then the ability to easily back up your user files let's say you, you need to move to a different computer you buy a couple new computers and you want to take metastock from one computer and put it on the other well before you had to go way back in the background folders and back those up now you just come over here let's close this out now you just come over here and do file backup user files and it creates a file for you to put on the thumb drive and then you can move it over to the new computer once you have Metastock installed on that new computer. So um, a lot easier to do that, of course. That was, always, that was a big request. The one that a lot of people really like is that you can clear out your smart charts with one click. So let me kind of show you what I mean by that. And let's just close these out. Oops. OK. So let's say um, that I want to plot in a couple different indicators on here. And we'll put Bollinger Bands. OK, so let's say we want to save this as my default template. So every time I open up a chart, I want this to be my default template. So right now, if you click on right click and do Save as Default Template, you want to replace the existing one that I had on there. So then I'll come back over here, and I'll open up the Power Console. Let's just open the, mm, let's see, let's do Microsoft. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I'm in options still. So now it'll actually remember um, the last thing, or the um, smart charts that you had, because I just barely reset them. But sometimes it actually doesn't remember this. Like if I had opened up, I'd actually opened up the SPX before. So I don't think it actually would save that. Hmm, I guess it does. Anyway, um, the other thing is, uh, a lot of times what I have is I'll have like these default, different default templates that I want to chart and I have to reset them. So before, 
to reset your smart chart, it's like a lot, this would happen with new users a lot. You'd plot in a bunch of indicators, you'd open up another symbol, and it just wouldn't open at all. Um, and I was trying to kind of get it so it wouldn't, would do, <clears throat> wouldn't do that. Let me try the DAO and see. If, oh, I know why. It's actually set right here as smart chart. So it already reset it, basically. But if you needed to do that in the past, you had to go into the, the file explorer of, of Windows. Let me bring it over here. And then you had to go to your C drive, users, Metastock, app data, local, Thomson Reuters. As you can tell, it was buried way deep, 17. And then you had to go to this area right here where it said data on demand cache, and I had to delete this folder. I don't have to do that anymore. I just come over here, file, delete smart charts, deletes all my smart charts. And saying that because I have the chart open still. And then I don't have to worry about it not saving my changes that I've saved to my default template. And if you don't use default template, that is templates, that is actually a really useful tool. I use it all the time. Um, you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt to always have to go back and rebuild your charts every day that you open up Metastock. So the, the saving of default templates is actually something that's really, really a nice feature inside of Metastock. For those that don't use it, um, I definitely would recommend it. Um, so the other thing that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, let me pull some, some of these up. And pull up a couple charts again. And then, and then let's open up Apple. Let's change the chart. I'm just gonna do, we'll do the act insta trend and open up the charts that way. Okay, let me hop back over to my PowerPoint. So you have actually about 40% 40, 40 faster load times um, as you, and then if, when you're inside of Metastock and you close and reopen it, it'll actually remember where you left off. For example, if I close it right now, um, this is also another thing that I wanted to touch on really quick. That was another thing that was really annoying inside previous versions. Whenever you went to close all of your charts, you had to click no, 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 like you know eight times or for however many charts you had open. Well, now you can just click no to all, closes all of them, and closes out Metastock. And then it'll remember like what um, I had on the on the uh, Metastock portion, meaning that if I had like default templates set up, or I had I left I was on the Explorer tab or the Chart tab, and what template I wanted to open up with my charts, it'll remember that automatically from now. So it'll just open back up, and you can see how quickly it does open here. Whereas before, sometimes it would take sometimes up to like two minutes for the program to open. Whereas now you can kind of see how fast it opens up. So let's just come back over to the desktop here. We're almost open. So what was that? 10, 15 seconds. So a lot quicker. And as you can see right here, now it, it's left me on the chart tab, and it's also left me on the Act Instant Trend system that I wanted to open. So something that's really nice. A lot of people found that really annoying. Well, I was on a daily and or I was on a five minute and now it put me back to daily and so it's nice that it just remembers all of that now. Um, let's go ahead and just keep Apple open right now. Oops. Okay, so then let's go back into the presentation here. So re more responsive symbol search. A lot of the times inside of uh, Metastock, um, when, you would, when you couldn't find a symbol, for example, You'd come over here and say, oh gosh, I know it's, it starts with an AAP. I think that's what it is. Now it actually appears right at the very top. And the one I always, I always recommend everybody oops, is to search where it has starts with or symbol. If you, if you know the name, then you can go over here and just do, uh, let's say you want to open up. Uh, so you want to open up advanced auto parts. You just start typing it in and uh, Here's the second one down. So another way of doing it, or maybe you want to look at Apple and make sure that one pops open. Oh, I <laughs> spelled it wrong. So then it shows up that way. And you can always say starts with or contains, and then it, you can go through the list. A lot easier to search for things. And you'll notice that Apple has a lot of different extensions, and it's just because I have all of our data lists and exchanges on the software. If you are, let's say, a U.S. trader only, and you only have the three main exchanges, like the New York NASDAQ and the New York Market Exchange, it's only going to search for those exchanges. It's not going to search everything in the world. But because we do presentations all over the, the world, that's why we have all of them in there, in case you wanted to know. So that was a, a big thing. Another reason 
excuse me, another thing that we added was easier access to past explorations. What was really annoying inside of the program before is when you're running explorations and you want to go back to that exploration, let's call, let's say you want to come back to this one day, <clears throat> one day high volume. Well, before you had to right click and do report that way. Now, if you have the box check, you can go back to your previous exploration and just come over here and do a run report or you can start the same exploration as well. So much easier um, way to manage it. Another thing that a lot of people wanted is they didn't always want to go back to the chart tab in order to create a custom list. Well, if you look right here, all of each tab has a custom list manager now. So if you just click on that, you can create a new list right there inside the software. Something that's a lot easier. Um, hey, Dave. Yeah. You got a question from YouTube. You want to take that? Yeah. Down? Okay. So we have a question on our YouTube page. So. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, Germano asks, when will Metastock allow conditional orders with uh, brokers? Do you have any plans to do that in the near future? Um, so the question was, can you place um, trades directly through Metastock into the broker? The issue with that is um, it has a lot to do with legalities and things like that. We are working on that and the ability to um, trade directly through Metastock into a broker platform, but we're actually in process of updating the code in order to do that, because obviously a lot of these brokers are updating their code constantly, and so we need to create an API to be able to actually interface with a broker. And we don't want to limit you to just a few brokers, whereas a lot of software companies out there like NinjaTrader, last time I looked, you can only trade through a few select different brokers. So we want to make it available so you can trade through any broker that you want, so you don't have to change brokers in order to do that. But it is something that we are working on. Um, so another one that a lot of people were kind of annoyed with was the power console kind of sometimes seemed fuzzy, especially for the high resolution um, computers or monitors. So that one, so it's a little lot easier, a lot more dynamic interface, cleaner view. So that was another one. Um, I already talked about the custom list. Um, and then I showed you already that if, if you have like multiple charts open and you go, go out to close the program, now you can do no to all if you don't want to save them or yes to all if you want to save them into a layout or a template or just a save chart file as well. Um, ability to adjust data in the downloader was a lot easier. Let me grab a chart that is downloaded so I can show you what I mean. OK, so let's say we just want to go into this one. And it was really kind of annoying in Metasoc where you had to, oops, to, in order to edit data. So now you can just you can do it in the downloader, or you can do it right here in the in the um, chart itself. You just right click on the chart, price values there, and do open data sheet, and then you can come over here and change however you want. Before you had to actually click in each cell, so they made it available so you can tab through each one individually, a lot quicker that way. So especially for people that aren't using Reuters Data Link as a data feed, or maybe you want to make adjustments for like dividend adjustments. Sometimes data can be a little off, and we adjust for um, stock uh, dividends, but like if there's like a dividend payout, if it doesn't affect the price of the stock, then we don't adjust for it. But some sometimes it does actually tweak it a little bit, and so a lot of people wanted that ability to be able to go in and tweak it the way they want it when there is a dividend adjustment. Um, but we do adjust for stock splits as well, uh, just an FYI on that one. So that's another thing they added. Um, and then I already showed you the next to sell in the downloader, and, and then the con con <clears throat> excuse me, consistent name of items copied into the Power Console. So a lot of different user requests. We added, we always try and add everything that we can. A lot of users are asking for things that, unfortunately, some things that Metasoc can't do currently. But we always are welcome to suggestions. And if you do have a recommendation that you think something would be better inside of Metastock or something that would make your life a little easier, go ahead and send it to suggestions at metastock.com. That actually goes to the developer, development manager. And he takes these things very seriously. If it can be done, then we really want to put it in our new versions or even the current version and maybe make a maintenance upgrade for customers. We've already done one maintenance upgrade because a lot of customers were requesting some additional things. Um, so that was already something that we've done with this current version. So moving on um, to our last thing, um, I'm just going to scroll through these. So the last two things I wanted to touch on is a lot of our, especially new users, always wanted to have Elliott Wave um, analysis, the ability to analyze Elliott Waves or have Elliott Waves and analyze in the way you want. 
and also use it for counting the waves and identifying different cycles in the market. So, you know, I mean, it's kind of standard in the industry. Not everybody uses or knows how to use Elliott waves. I'm not one that particularly knows 100% how to use them, but I wanted to go through a little bit of the two new um, expert trading systems that we put in Metastock 17. So again, the first one was is the Elliott waves. This is actually based on the work by Aaron Elliott. He was an accounting accountant back in the 1800s, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. And this is an add-on that we actually used to sell for uh, $300. So we just included it with Metastock 17 now. Uh, but it comes with a few different explorations and expert advisors and templates and things like that. Now, there was, like I said, it was an add-on that we used to sell. So we put a kind of a light version inside the software already. But if you want to get the full add-on, you can actually download the full add-on under patches and updates on our website and then you can get the full add-on if you so want that. So like I said, um, who is R and Elliot? He was the guy that created Elliot Waves. Um, he was an accountant in the 18 or 1800s into the 1948 time frame, um, and, he was, and he studied the stock market uh, data that led him to develop the Elliot Wave principle, or wave principle is what he calls it. There's a book out there um, that touches on this, and I can't remember the name, but I think it's called the Elliot Wave Theory. Um, done by two different uh, technical analysis guys, and it's actually really good. I've gotten through about half of it. Um, it is definitely goes deep into Elliott Waves if you want to really know the ins and outs of all of them, of the Elliott Waves, excuse me. So really good read. Um, if you want to learn more about it, like I said, it's called the Elliott Wave Theory. But anyway, so he basically proposed that the market's prices unfold in specific patterns, which he now calls, or we now call, Elliott Waves. And it's all based on different cycle analysis in the market. And they can be long-term, short-term, medium-term. You have what we call waves within waves and things like that. So there's, there's a couple different types of um, ways to identify this. Oh, let me read this one real quick. So he used, he used Elliott Waves to identify market cycles, like I mentioned, and using it as market psychology. It breaks down uh, the different into waves that show the characteristics of the mar market psychology. It also breaks into eight different types of waves. Not to be confused with patterns, waves are completely different. Okay, so what is a wave? Usually waves, you're looking at that cycle in the market. When it goes up, breaks down, goes up, breaks down. So, and he used these by numbers and letters um, in, the, in the Elliott Wave Theory. So your wave one is when you're breaking up, wave two is when you're breaking down. And you have two different types of waves. One is motive waves that push the market. And then you have the corrective waves are the counter trend. So going back to the PowerPoint, your motive wave is like your one, three, and five. Your corrective waves are your twos and fours. And if you get to it, six. <clears throat> and you, we label these one through five for the, um, the, one, the motive waves. One, three, and five affect the direction. The two and four are interruption waves. And then you, you have the corrective waves that are labeled A, B, and C. So kind of showing this on a chart, and you have two, two different types of motive waves as well. One is an impulse, the other one is diagonal. And it kind of analyzes everything for you. So you don't have to be an expert at Elliott Waves. I'm definitely not. Um, so let's go ahead inside of Metastock and open up a chart for you. Um, oh, we can just use this one. So always what I recommend to everybody, and I get this a lot, especially with our new users or one of our um, older users that have just purchased an add-on, if there's a template that comes with the system, use the template because it's going to give you the additional indicators. Obviously, if you use just the expert or the template, it's going to put the expert signals on the chart. But always use the template. That's kind of my rule of thumb. I mean, you don't have to, but I always do, and it is a lot better in my opinion. So you just come down here in your in your um, template area the, to apply it, and then we'll just do the Elliott Waves Advanced. So just double click on that one. The chart's kind of a little dark. I'm actually going to change the color so everybody can kind of see everything. There. Well, actually, I want to keep these ones dark because there's some white lines on there. This is the only one I want to keep dark. Sorry, hang on. Okay, so as you can see on the chart here, you got these fives. You got, and they use Roman numerals as well um, for the the corrective waves. You got the B on here, but let's kind of scroll back a little bit. 
And these are like waves within waves. These are your shorter term waves. So here's a, a perfect example. So you have your wave one, and then you break down to your wave two, break up to wave three, break down to wave four, and break back up to wave five. So you've got a full cycle right there. And it just basically helps you identify where the, where the breakups are gonna go, the reversals in the market, the pullbacks, um, when you need to be in kind of a longer term trend versus a shorter term, I'm on a daily chart. So this is definitely a longer term trade. And what one of my customers told me that um, trades using specifically Elliott waves, he usually tries to wait for, or he waits for the threes and the fours and the fives is when he uses those signals to actually get into the chart or into the trade. So a lot easier way to identify um, Elliott waves. The add-on that we used to sell was a little more complicated. It was it was a very heavy add-on, meaning that all the formulas that the person created did it all on the chart. So when you were going to open a chart, it took quite a while to open it. Whereas you kind of saw when I opened this, it didn't take forever to open. So it also comes with different explorations in here. Um, if you come over here to the Explore tab, and then we'll just scroll, oops, wrong area. And then we'll just scroll down here again, down to the Elliott Waves. We'll just do like Impulse, Normal. I always like, and, and it has in here like the normal, the slow, and the fast. So the fast, when it talks about speed, that's basically the um, amount of time that it takes to go into the next wave. So if you're looking for fast, those are like the more shorter term waves. It's, it has to travel less distance in order for it to give you results in the Explorer. Whereas moderate's normal, kind of like the one that I just showed on the chart here. Slow is like the very, very long term cycle analysis. And we'll, let's actually do that one. Uh, I need to remove one of them. Take that off. Oops. So remove this. And then let's grab a list really quick. I'm just going to do the S&P 100. Hopefully we can get some results on that one. OK. Oops. I have something else checked already. OK. And then we'll just go ahead and start exploration. So for those that actually have an older version of Metastock, uh, 16, older than 16, excuse me, you, you'll you notice that the Explorer window is a lot um, different, where it's not just this little small rectangular uh, window. What's nice in the new um, Metastock version 16 and 17 is the new Explorer feature, and it allows you to run multiple explorations. I obviously didn't do that with this one. Um, you can actually view the details. If the code is open, then you can come over and view the details of the actual code itself. Or if you need to just delete it off your, your list, then you can do that as well. So we didn't find anything in, in this one. We actually, I think I actually need to load more data. That was the problem. Let's try this. David, you want to answer a question while yep. that's running? Uh, again, Germano asks, can I do options back test with Metastock? I would love to enter and exit trades using, oh, sorry, my mic's not on. I beg your pardon. He asks, can I do options back test with Metastock? I would love to enter and exit trades using stock prices and do variations of those back and do variations of those back tests using ATM, ITM, et cetera. Um, the answer is yes, you can actually back test. So you can scan, you can explore, you can um, use the forecaster as well if you want to. Um, the problem with that is you're gonna have a little bit less data for back testing because options obviously expire fairly quickly. But if you want, you know, if you're doing like a bi-weekly option or a monthly option, then you can definitely back test those. That is something you can do. And if you need help with that, you can always give support a call. They can always walk you through those kinds of things. Um, so I'm still not finding any results there. So let's try and make the list bigger. Let's do the S&P 500. I mean, it's, it's obviously doing what it's supposed to do. It's just, I just wanna get some results so I can show you guys. It's still rejecting 100%. Okay, I'm gonna go to the other one because I want I just want to show you what it looks like when you have the results and how to read it. So let's do normal. Oh, I know what we're gonna do. Let's do the wave signal scan and then we'll do the same list and it should get some results on that one. Hmm, still rejecting everything. I'm doing something wrong. Okay, let me just check something real quick. Oh, I know why. I know what I'm doing. 
I keep putting load minimum. <laughs> so that was my problem. I'm sorry. Okay, now we should get some. Let's just see. No, I got some before, so I know that it works. Kind of strange that it's rejecting all of them right now. So we'll let that run. Um, let's go back over to the PowerPoint here. And that way I can kind of give you some different um, images of like the longer term anyways you can see these these light um, green big circles that have actually numbers in them these are your long or your slow l8 waves so you have your one breaking down and then your two and then your three over here and four and if there was a five uh, <clears throat> on that one so good example of that so these are what you would call your directional and your correctional waves like I kind of already explained um, here's just another another example. Um, and I've already kind of showed this as well. Just these are like the minor mode of waves, and then you have waves within waves. You have those big long-term waves, and then you have these shorter-term ones. Those are your minor waves, or what we call waves within waves. Um, so the, it's just the different time frame. So again, you know, there are mode of waves that push the market. The corrective waves are the counter trends. You're labeled one through five. The others are labeled A, B, C, etc. So let's go back to Metastock. See if I got any results. Yeah, still not getting any. Well, we actually did get one, so I'm going to let this run so I can at least look at it. Almost done here. Let me actually just go ahead and cancel because I've got a couple of experts. Okay, perfect. So the way you're reading this is you're reading it as which wave um, happen. So right here it has 20% bars, um, rate of change 21%, 13% bars, etc. Right here is which wave occurred on that current particular bar and how long ago it was is the 73. So it was 73 bars ago or 64 bars ago. So you want to look for one that's fairly close. In this one it was wave 3 and it happened 2 bars ago. So let's actually, let's open up this report 1. And then we'll right click and change it to Anyways, and I'm trying to remember which one goes with that particular one. I think it's the high volatility. Just open that one and see. No, that's not the right one. Let's do just the other way advanced. Yeah, this is one. Okay. So this is the one that happened just a few bars ago. I'm going to change the background again for everybody. It does come standard black. But obviously, you can go in and change it and save the template for white. So this one just happened. This has support and resistance lines on it. So right here, you see these big long ones, these uh, bright ones, the ones that have a big circle around them. These are your really longer term ones. So this one just had wave one and hasn't even didn't even have a hit the conditions for a second wave to complete. And same thing with this one so far. So these are your really big long term ones, and then you've got your waves within waves. So if we scroll back and kind of see, like, here's one, one, two, and then it kind of stops there. So you really want, like my customer was telling me, you really want to have at least three three and four is what you look for as far as a good tr trading opportunity. Um, but it's just a really nice way of identifying and analyzing Elliott Waves. If you're an Elliott Wave guy or trader, perfect thing to do at Metasock 17. You know, it's a great little simple system that is already inside of the program and for a small upgrade price, it's definitely worth it because a lot a lot of um, traders out there pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for an edit wave analysis program. Um, so that one, that is definitely something that's really nice inside of Metastock now. Um, let's just try one more thing. Yeah, so anyway, so I just wanted to, to touch on that a little bit there. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. There's one last thing I wanted to talk about. We're running a little bit out of time, but we'll get through it. Okay, and then, you know, you've got your three different types of corrective waves. You've got your zigzag, your flats, and triangles. All of these indicators are inside of Metastock. So you don't have to use the template if you don't want to. You can create your own and just use the expert system built inside of the software using the Elliott Wave analysis. And the, I mean, and they're all labeled. 
um, correctly for it. So they all start with Elliott Wave and then it has the system, either fast, normal, or slow, um, so on and so forth. So I'll just click through these quickly. And so again, here, let me go back to that. So then you can scan for waves inside of the software. In this particular example, this is a better example than I could get. So the first uh, number is which wave it is. So in this wave, in this example, it was wave six and how many bars ago. So you want to look for ones that were two or three or five or you know maybe even ten bars ago. And that way you can kind of see how that works. So again, just to recap how light waves work and what is inside of it, they're used to identify market cycles and psychology. They break down into waves that show the characteristics of the market, and you have eight different types of waves. They are different than patterns. So the next thing that we added, we used to sell this add-on by Martin Pring. Anybody that's a trader out there that's been in the market for a while, I'm sure you've heard of, Mark, of Martin Pring. He's been around since the late 60s. And he still has his own uh, website, but he created and founded uh, Pring Research back in 81 and began um, providing research and financial tools to, inst or excuse me, began providing research for financial institutions and individual investors around the world since 1984. But what he did is he had been using Metastock for quite some time and, uh, and recommended it to, all of, to anybody that, that contacted him. He actually had a little kind of training website as well for, there for a while. Um, he's kind of basically retired at this point. And so what we did is he created this add-on that we would sell with Metastock, and I believe it came out with version 11. But we sold it for $300, and we included this one as well. So you're, you're getting $600 worth of some really good trading systems inside of Metastock 17 now. So what it, like I said, what it's called, it's called Martin Pring's Special K. And if you have done any research on Martin Pring, you'll notice inside of the Metastock indicator quick list, there's an indicator in here called the KST indicator. Actually, I think it's, hang on, there we go. So you've got the KST, intermediate, long-term, and short-term. So it's three different types of indicators. Well, what he did is, um, for those that don't know what KST means, it means no sure thing. And you know for sure to get into the trade, basically. It's a momentum-based indicator on, uh, based on the rate of change, and it, the signal line is a moving average of the KST, is what it is. So here's basically what it looks like. This is the KST indicator within Metastock. This isn't the, the special K add-on. This is the KST indicator. So it has the moving average for the signal line, kind of similar to MACD a little bit. So, and then what Special K adds is he uses three different types of cycles and indicators. So he's got a short, a medium, and a long term. Or in this case, I would call it the primary trend is the long term. The intermediate trend is this kind of medium term or swing trade term, and the short term is your. Um, your main indicator, basically. So what he does is he combines all three of them together. So he uses the primary trend to identify the reversals in the market at a relatively early stage. And then he uses the short term for the changes in direction that are unique to the indicator to spot a one to six week buying and short opportunities. So the benefits of it. Signals the primary trend to identify those early reversals in the market. Tells you when the short term opportunities are developing in that direction. So let's actually go in and show you this on a chart. I could flip through as many slides as I want, but I, don't, I want to actually open this and show everybody. Okay, let's open up Best Buy again. And before I even open the chart, I can actually just select it here from the quick list. We'll just go down, find Special K. Okay, so you have a daily and a weekly. So we'll just open it up on a daily. And then we'll just load our default. Let's open up the chart. And it doesn't look like the indicator got applied. Here we go. Okay, there we go. So you can see on the chart here, let's actually zoom in a little bit. It actually identifies those. And I'm gonna change this. I actually like candlesticks a lot more or candle volume. So you can change this. You can see the different primary trends. The red um, is your primary trend, and then you've got your shorter term right here where the greens are. Um, but it identifies those different reversals in the markets. Here's the actual special K add-on, and here's the no sure thing. So we actually labeled that in the template so you can see the difference between the two. You know, for example, like right here, here's your sell signal. 
um, actually right there. So that's where the, the primary trend crossed below the medium term trend and actually gave you the, the entry for a short. Um, or in this case, actually, it would have been a buy as well. So right here is another good example. They're crossing, this one's crossing above each other. Um, they're touching, you know, and you've got your main, in, your, excuse me, the candlesticks are colored the grain for an up, upward reversal. So a little um, easier way to identify different early reversals that are developing in the market. Great way to um, use inside of Metastock. Again, we used to sell this out on for like $300. We sold quite a few of them when it first was released. Um, but what we did is we kind of revamped it to work in today's market um, and use different types of um, pricing gauges and different we rewrote the formula a little bit so to work in better better in our current market obviously when it was created it was back with version 10 and 11 so the market was completely different 16 years ago um, so those are dif different kinds of things that are built into metasoc 17 for those of you that were thinking about upgrading it's a definitely a really good um really good price really good time to upgrade here's just a couple different examples of the short term this is a two to week trend two to six weeks trend so that's what they're talking about right here this one and then you've got your different, here's another example of it in the chart. So I'm not going to flip through all these. Um, it's actually what I want to do. Oh, there is actually one last thing that I did want to talk about um, is inside of the, with the special K, excuse me, you have your different explorations. We're a little bit short on time, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to run any. But inside Metasoc 17, if you just come down the list, they're right here under, oops. Did I skip by them? Yep, right here. So you have your positive slope with the primary buy, and then your max buy, primary bull. Um, and then it, it actually gives you a description of what it is if you're not sure and understand what it is based on. So you can actually just hover it over and it gives you a small description. Or if you double click, it'll actually tell you right here as well. And the code's open. So if you want to look at the code, it shows you it right here. For any time that you want to open up a system and look at the code, if you want to change it, you know, more power to you. You know, that's that's definitely something you can do. Just make sure you make a copy of it before you change any code in it if you are going to do that. I just kind of leave things as is, though. One other thing that a lot of people wanted inside of Metastock that was always kind of annoying, and I kind of agree as well, was we have a, one of our most popular trading systems is a person by the name of uh, Rahul Mahinder. We call it the RMO. And if you open up a template, it's just right here where it says RMO Trade Model. Well, before, in previous versions, you didn't have a commentary window. It was kind of a little annoying um, for some people because they really, really wanted that commentary window. I mean, that's a really powerful tool in Metastock. If you don't use the commentary window, definitely would recommend it. What it does is it just really sets everything up for you to, to know if you should get into the trade or not, basically giving you like a full like description of that particular trading opportunity. So all you do to open it is just right-click on your chart, do Expert Advisor, and then you'll do commentary. And I like to attach mine to the chart, so I just drag it over here. So right here, let's just say you are looking at trading this uh, particular symbol, and you want to know really if you if you should get into the trade. So it basically lays everything out for you. You know, for a buy setup, which is what this would be considered, you need to identify that the bar is blue in color, which has or is preceded by a blue arrow. Most importantly, the RMO should also be positive. When he says the RMO, he's talking about this green one up here above, which it is, it's above the zero line. And um, the RMO denotes the primary trend and is the green histogram on the top. It also, also denoted in the ribbon across the x-axis down here. So then he just goes through and says, okay, the RMO is bullish, the bar color, the, excuse me, the bar color is blue, the last arrow is down. Or a cell. So this actually is a really neat system. If you don't use this in Metastock or want, are looking for a really good trading system inside the software, let me just change these lines for you. This is a definitely a good one to start with. If you're new to using Metastock or even like a long-term user and you want a good system or indicator to help you with your trades, this definitely is one to use. Now with a commentary window, it just helps you set everything up too. So, uh, so I'm not gonna reread everything. I kind of talk. I talked everything that I wanted to with Metasoc 17. So for those that actually we're running a really good promotion this month for those that upgrade and those that actually own Metasoc 17. If you really want some extra help on using Metasoc, we actually have world class support. There's more people in our support team than in marketing and sales combined. 
Um, but what we do is for a lot of the new customers and people that just want extra help, we do what we call a white glove service. We'll, we'll schedule an appointment for you at a convenient time for you. One of the, our lead support specialists will call you, connect to your computer, and give you like a full walkthrough. We do this a lot with our new customers, but if you're struggling on learning like an older version of Metastock and still want to upgrade to Metastock 17, we can definitely get that scheduled and get you on uh, with one of those guys as well. So when you purchase Metastock 17, we actually we created a manual and videos to go along with it as well. Um, you get that for free. We do normally sell it for $100, but you get it free with the plugin, or excuse me, with the purchase of your upgrade. And then what we're doing this month, actually, with our lead support specialist, he's been with Metastock for seven or for 20 plus years. He actually started with version five, and he knows the program in and out. Anytime we have questions on using Metastock or support can't figure out an issue, they always go to him. And he actually trains a lot of our institutional clients on how to use Metastock as well. So you may have seen him on, um, on our website or doing training sessions, or if you've gone to any of our user conferences, then you, you would have seen him there as well. And I want to actually just show you the, the page and what we're doing with him. Sorry, I'm gonna get back to that. Greg, what's the code for the landing page? Uh, I forgot. For the upgrade for the prospects. Upgrade. It is M E two two zero. That's what I thought. Okay, so. We're actually doing, here's a good image of, of Lynn. He's actually been, like I said, here for 21 years. I was right. So he's our senior uh, technical support specialist, and he does, like I said, support for our institutional customers. He knows the program in and out more than anybody in the office. Um, he's going to do a full um, three-part training course um, in February, March, and April, specifically on Metastock 17, its new features. He's going to talk about different basic formula language. If you want to dive into the formula language inside of Metastock, this will be a great way to do it. We're going to record these as well, but he's going to talk um, about anything you really want. He's going to open it up for a Q&A, and you guys can open up the to all questions that you want. But we really want this to be an interactive experience, so you definitely come with questions or even suggestions or how-tos and things like that. So he's definitely going to give you a lot of tips and tricks. Anybody that has 17 or purchases 17 this month, you get access to those that training, those training courses. So definitely a great value. So let's talk about real quick about the um, pricing for those that haven't upgraded or want to upgrade to Metastock. So let's go back here. Okay, so for those that actually own Metastock 16, this month, you're only paying $149, and that's actually less than what our initial release price was. So if you're a $16, $149, anything to $15 and under, so if you're on version 11 or version 12, you can upgrade for just $249. That's like $800 worth of upgrades for $250. Um, if you're on the real time, for 16 to 17 users, you pay just $249, and then you get everything that I talked about in the, in the webinar, the training, the one-on-one -on -one, um, walkthrough if you want it, Anybody that's a 15 or older user for seven, or excuse me, for Metastock, you pay just $349. Now, if you're brand new to Metastock and you, what you saw today, you really want to try out Metastock, we actually do a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you purchase Metastock end of day for just a $449. Um, I actually misquoted that price. It's, like, it's $449, you save $50. On the real time, you can buy it for $1295, and you save $100. There are other options like subscription plans that we have available to try it out too. Um, if you contact me directly, I'll send out an email afterwards to everybody. Um, that, that way you'll have my contact so you can reach out to me by email or via phone as well. But um, So there's all my contact information. If you want to learn more about Metastock, maybe you're brand new to, Meta to seeing Metastock for the first time, you want to learn more about it, I put my web link down there. You can go there and learn more. There's some videos there, more detailed explanation on the, on the program itself. Um, you can call me at that 800 number. Or you can chat with me if you're international. You can hop on our online chat and just ask for me when you log in. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the webinar today. 
it's always fun to show everybody the new features in Metastock and talk about it for an hour. Uh, but I do appreciate everybody joining us. And I'll just open it up for any extra questions that we have. Uh, you did have a question, Dave, on the YouTube side. Um, I'm trying to find it, though. <laughs> OK. We've gone away since then. Oh, uh, Victor Cabral says, does Metastock have a DIDI index? Yeah, we do. Glad you knew what that was. And yeah. also, somebody, uh, Germano had said, have we ever run, uh, let me find that question, I'm sorry. He's wondering if we've ever run a Quinsformer test on each of our um, add-ons to see which would do better, uh, uh, which does best. And I chatted him in response that we've never really done that. And that would Not probably really. be difficult to do because Add-ons work so differently depending on the markets. Depending right. On the, I mean, yeah, we. Kind of be hard to line yeah. That up. The answer to that question really is, I mean, the question was, if anybody didn't hear what Greg was talking about, it's, have we ever done any performance testing or scanning for all of our add-ons to find out which one works the best? It's really hard, and that's why there are actually quite a few add-ons because they cater to specific markets. For an example, um, Jake Bernstein is a futures trader. He's been trading for forty years. If you're a stock trader, that's not even it's not even on your list. So there's no way to really test the performance of all of them. But a lot of them for our customers, because the majority of our customers are stock and options trader, which is also why we added that option scope ability inside of Metastock. However, with those add-ons and plugins, they are catered to a specific group of traders. For example, if you like candlesticks, then you'd want one that's called the Stephen Bigelow Candle Profit System. It identifies the 33 top candle patterns um, in the market and the most successful ones that he's had the most um, the most gains for. Or another example of that would be, um, trying to think off the top of my head, uh, Vince Vora Veracity. That one, he's been using different types of momentum indicators. He uses like some CCIs, some different stop indicators. What it does is it puts a preempted signal on the chart when a actual signal is coming so you can kind of prepare for it. So, but again, a lot of them are universal where you can use with any market, but they all are specific to the type of trading that maybe somebody is doing. And I have customers that buy quite a few of the add-ons. They incorporate all of them into their trading style, and it's a great way to do it. I'm not saying you have to go out and buy every single one of them. You know, maybe if you're looking at any add-ons and you like candlesticks or you like trends or whatnot, you, you know, it all depends. So we haven't really done any, like, performance testing on all of them. I hope that sort of answers the question. I think you did great. Uh, I should also point out, I, you may not, the, I can't see the uh, GoToWebinar chat. So yeah, I'm looking at it. Okay, all right. Yeah. That was all the questions. Okay. The well, I do appreciate everybody coming out today. Um, if you do have any questions, you can definitely contact me. And hopefully everybody has a great night. Thanks again for joining.